Jesus with an authority to apply his church with him that was in the power of God. That is the thing. Uh, the plus will get you the most general solution for everything. So we do we just put this uh, each of just put the equations together. Yeah, you need to f find the Laplace. So the process goes like this: you need to find the Laplace of both equations, the right hand side and the left hand side. You're gonna get two y and z. Uh, okay. And then you need to solve these two. You're going to get a system of equations for y and z after you take Laplace. You need to solve these equations for either y or z. Yeah. Um, and then what, once you solve your equations for y and z, you get it into the forms that's available in the table by partial fraction decomposition. You split them up, whatever you have to do, get them ready, factoring, etc. And then you go back and you take inverse Laplace to actually figure out z of t and y of t. That's how it's because there's, there's two equations. Yeah, there's two equations because you have two dependent ver uh, functions, y and z. So you have to solve for both of these. Right. So, so the, for the one of the equations, the right hand side is zero. So it's just. Well, like plus of zero is zero. zero. Yeah. And, okay. and so you don't do it separately, you just combine the two equations? Well, first you have to do to do the Laplace separately, but yeah, then right. eventually you have to solve yeah, the right. system. Of course, you have to do it. Eventually, you have to put it, put it together. Right? It's like when you first do it, you don't just put it. Just why? Why would you put them together? These are two different equations that will give you different results. So Laplace of the first one is p squared. So y double prime is p squared y minus uh, p y zero y zero is just zero so this goes away uh, minus y prime of zero which is one and that's equal to uh, the plus of uh, plus z double prime so now we'll go to z double prime so the plus of z double prime is uh, p squared z big z uh, minus p times z of zero, which is one, uh, minus uh, z prime of zero, which is one, uh, minus z prime, minus uh, p z, uh, p z, uh, minus minus becomes plus z of zero, which is one. Uh, and that's equal to plus of zero is zero. So our first equation is this guy goes away. We get p squared y plus if we factor out the z, we get p squared z minus p minus p. Uh, Minus uh, uh, so these two go away, and then we get uh, p squared z uh, and that's multiplying the z, and we have left the so we got these two taken care of, and then we have uh, plus, we have minus one with plus one, these two go away, and we have minus p minus one equal to zero. And if we take minus p minus one to the right hand side, we just get p plus one. So this here is 
the first equation. Let's call this equation 3 or A. Okay, now let's take Laplace of the second equation. So, Laplace of the second equation, we have y prime. So that's, so we did Laplace of this. Now we're going to do Laplace of this. So Laplace of y prime, that's just uh, p1 minus y0 minus 0 plus Laplace of z prime, that's pz minus z0, z0 is 1, minus 2 times z minus 2 big z. Okay, Laplace of 1, Laplace One over p, yeah. One over p and Laplace of e to the t minus e to the t is just one over p a. So a is minus one. So this becomes p minus one. Okay, and so if we just put this together, we get py plus uh, plus uh, P minus two Z equals one over P minus one over P minus one plus one. Here we factored out the z, we don't need it here. Okay, so now we have the two equations. This is b. Okay, then we need to solve for one of them. Uh, so let's multiply the second equation by minus p, add it to the first. So this becomes minus p squared y minus p, which is p minus 2z, because if I multiply by minus p, I get minus 1 plus root p over p minus 1 minus p and we're going to add this to uh, the first equation which is p squared y minus or plus p into p minus 1 Z. Just copying down the first equation equals p plus one. So this was equation B or A. 
this is b multiplied by minus b and now what we're going to do is we're going to add them and so if we add them we will get this two will go away we will get p p minus 1 minus p p minus 2 all multiplied with the z so this is addition equals p plus 1 minus 1 plus p over p minus 1 minus p okay nice so it does work out into an efficient uh, form because these two go away these two go away and we have left uh, if I factor here p I would get p minus 1 minus p plus 2 and z equals p over p minus 1 and I could cross out the p and we will get z equals 1 over uh, p minus p go away nice and we have 1 here left oh wait uh, minus yeah p minus 1 minus p plus 2 so we have 1 left so there's basically nothing Uh, yeah, over P minus 1. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. It turns out to be a very, very nice answer. And so... Uh, inverse Laplace that conveniently enough gets us there quickly inverse Laplace Z equals inverse Laplace over P minus 1 and we will get Z of T equals and that's E so here a is minus 1 so this is e to the minus a t so this is e to the t so z of t is a a to the t e to the t this concludes this and uh, now we need to find y so take that, plug it into, uh, let's say, equation B, which is probably easier. Or wait, no, actually, equation A is easier, because now that we know the Z. So P squared Y. So now I'm taking equation A. P squared y uh, plus p times p minus 1 times z. Uh, this z we will take the Laplace form of that z, which is this right here 1 over p minus 1. Again, conveniently enough, these two go away. And that's equal to P plus 1.
So we get p squared y equals p plus 1. We have a p left here. And then minus p plus p plus 1. These two go away. And y ends up being 1 over p squared. Nice. And if y is 1 over p squared, universal plus that. Both sides. And this is just y of t equals. Uh, put this one here to make it work with the form of the table k is 1 we need k factorial so this becomes just uh, k plus 1 equals 2 so k is 1 so this is the same thing as 1 factorial so this becomes t to the k so this becomes t So the final solution is z of t equals e to the t and y of t equals t. Nice short answers. This concludes this problem.